Hey, Jonathan, some pretty surprising news over the weekend coming from the Washington Post. They've got it actually at the top of their page today um, that the head of the Wagner Group actually was talking about uh, turning on the Russians giving up uh, positions for, of Russian troops to Kyiv so uh, that the Ukrainians could kill the Russians uh, in exchange for, for Kyiv backing off uh, going against the Wagner Group in Bakhmut. Yeah, this story really sends shockwaves around Washington and European capitals allied with Kyiv in this war against Russia. And let's get into it. Indeed, ahead of an anticipated counteroffensive by Ukraine against Russian forces, the Post, as Joe just said, reports the head of the Wagner Group made an extraordinary offer. I'll read from it. If Ukraine's commanders withdrew their soldiers from the area around Bakhmut, he would give Kyiv information on Russian troop positions, which Ukraine could use to attack them. This is according to previously unreported U.S. intelligence documents. NBC News has not reviewed the documents in question. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky wrapped up a visit to France, meeting with French President Macron, who announced afterwards that his nation is providing more military aid to Ukraine, including armored vehicles and light tanks. Today, President Zelensky is visiting the United Kingdom, where more military aid is also expected to be announced. A few days ago, he was in Berlin. And the Germans have said they will do the same. Joining us now, former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch. Her memoir, Lessons from the Edge, is now out in paperback and includes a new afterword about Russia's war in Ukraine. Madam Ambassador, great to see you again this morning. Let's just start with getting your reaction to that story, that the idea that the head of the Wagner Group, which of course has risen to some prominence here, uh, particularly in the fighting around Bakhmut, uh, that he might be willing to deal with the Ukrainians to sell out the positions of Russian troops. We know there's some divide between him and the Kremlin. We should note that it looks like the Ukrainians didn't take him up on it, but what do you think this says about the state of Putin's war? Yeah, you know, just when you think you can't be surprised anymore, you get surprised by uh, what's going on in, uh, in, in Russia. It, it's, it's a little hard to judge this, whether this is a straightforward offer uh, <clears throat> of uh, working with the Ukrainians or whether it's a double cross. I mean, I think we need more information. But clearly, um, a lot is happening in Russia uh, today, particularly in Moscow. Uh, the, you know, the various formations, whether it's Wagner, whether it's the regular military, whether it's the Chechens. I mean, they're all scorpions in a box trying to um, trying to be the first uh, among equals. Uh, Marie, it's Richard Haas here. Why do you think the Ukraine is making such a stand at Bakhmut? It goes way beyond any potential military significance. In some ways, it drains resources from a larger offensive operation, which is strategically more significant. What, what is going on here? Is the symbol that important? Is this simply about politics or is there something more? Yeah, I, I mean, I think you're right. I think it's symbolic. It was important to Russia, uh, has been important all along to Putin. Most recently, he wanted to take Bakhmut by uh, May 9th, Victory Day. Um, that obviously didn't happen. And I think because it was so important to, uh, to Russia and to Putin personally, it became important to the Ukrainians and to President Zelensky himself. And so they have really thrown a lot at this. Um, obviously, they've, um, they, they have... Um, you know, uh, really uh, attrited the Russians, um, but they have taken a lot of casualties themselves as well. Well, I mean, they've taken a lot of uh, casualties themselves. Obviously, the, the, the costs to the Russians yeah. have been heinous. So I'm wondering if they knew uh, if, if that was their strategy to inflict such heavy damage that you would have even the head of the Wagner, Wagner Group uh, trying to make a deal with Kiev. Of course, they couldn't foresee that, but they certainly could foresee the waves of Russians uh, just running uh, to, to, toward their guns and, and running to their deaths. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think you're right. That, that, that certainly is a strategy. And for uh, a long time, it wasn't clear that it was going to be successful. Still not uh, completely clear, but the uh, Ukrainians over the last um, week or so have managed to uh, clock in some... Um, you know, some, some gains, um, you know, two, uh, two square miles of, uh, of uh, gained territory, which is important, important in Bakhmut and important symbolically. 
Ambassador Shinsaki, I wanted to ask you, there's been also reports over the last couple of days that the amount of money left for the Ukrainians from the United States is winding down and will wind down this summer. And uh, this pitch to Democrats and Republicans is a tricky one. So I wanted to ask you just about yeah. how concerned you are watching this and what you think um, they need to be conveying to U.S. officials about what's happening on the ground and why they need more funding. Yeah, well, I, I think you can see that Zelensky is, um, you know, making a European tour right now. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I don't have any information on this, but I wouldn't be surprised if he would um, come to the United States as well to explain directly to leaders what is happening, what their plans are, and, and um, you know, next steps forward. Um, obviously, the expected counteroffensive, whenever it comes, and the Ukrainians, not surprisingly, are not making an announcement on this, um, you know, what date the Russians should be ready. Um, but uh, when it comes, is going to be uh, important. Um, but I think we, we, we don't want to read too much into uh, what happens at, at the end of it, because even if it is wildly successful um, beyond uh, everybody's dreams, um, it's not going to be the end of the world, a war. Um, uh, we need to be into uh, in, in, in this for the, the long haul, for as long as it takes, as President Biden says. And so I, I, I think we need to... Um, um, I think that's the message that uh, Zelensky needs to keep on um, sharing with uh, with publics and with world leaders, um, and also that this is a war that matters to the world community as well. This is not just a Ukrainian war. Richard, Richard, I, I wanted to ask you about China. Uh, there's been reports, despite the reported acrimony and back and forth with the United States and China, there's been reports now that there is the possibility of some of some constructive dialogue, constructive meetings with China? What, what can you tell us? Yeah, late last week, you had two days of meetings between Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor for President Biden, and Wang Yi, who's on the Politburo, former foreign minister, the most senior foreign policy official in China. This is the first serious engagement after the whole balloon back and forth, the postponement of Secretary Blinken's trip. And the readouts of the meeting were almost old-fashioned diplomacy. It was things like candid, honest, serious, no public leaks. This was no longer fighting it out in public like we saw in Munich. This was serious foreign policy. And my view is that several hours, what I understand, several hours of these meetings were devoted to this, to the war in Ukraine. And that's what's so significant. China, more than any other country, is in a position to influence Russia. Vladimir Putin cannot be comfortable with this report. So if China decides for its own reasons that it wants this war to wind down, either they don't want to see U.S. alliances get even stronger, they're nervous about where Russia's taking the world, they want to improve things with the United States for whatever reasons they have economically, that could be an important development. So I would simply say, you know, watch that space. But quietly, this to me was the probably the most interesting foreign policy development we've seen in weeks, if not months, that the United States and China have reopened a serious conversation. All right, Richard Haas, thank you so much. Richard, uh, who, who wins this weekend? Uh, Xander Shoffley, I think, but I'm rooting for Cameron Young, Joe. You know why? He's from Scarborough, New York. He, continue, he should be your guy, too. Cameron Young. Richard, most of us here, I won't speak for the ambassador, but most of us here just think you're still making names up. <laughs> Former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch, thank you so much for being with us. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, your book, a great one, Lessons from the Edge, is now out in paperback. Coming up.